out to your students. Next, we're going to collect the forms. <laughs> and I had the quotations on there because I know that that's a big concern right now with health concerns is you don't necessarily want to get back those papers just because of those health concerns and what you may be aware of with that. So how can you collect your forms without really collecting them? So students have the options that we can bring back for this file scan that I'm going to show you later is one, they can take a picture and convert it to a PDF. Now there were uh, right about three or four weeks ago, right as everything was kind of going on blowing up is there were a ton of resources out there about how you could take, how you could take a picture and change it to a PDF and send it to your teacher. I will say, so there are a ton of apps out there that can do that on a mobile device, a tablet or a phone. But I would say the two that I liked, if you have an Apple device, the notes app is actually really spectacular just go into the generic notes app that is right on your phone and you click on the camera like you're gonna take a picture but then you get the option to scan document from there you can just send the document from the app Android you can use the Google Drive app if you would like and in there it's the same way you hit the plus sign and hit the camera and then you can scan the document the Drive app on the Apple doesn't have that functionality I'm not a developer I don't know why they did that but just so you know that those are two great apps and very simplistic on most of those that you may already have available to you so the students can take a picture of their form so like I have a form right here I have my form that I would lay it down and use my phone to scan it as a PDF. From there, you can email it, you could text it, you could put it in some sort of a cloud shared folder, you could submit it on Google Classroom or some other LMS. They're just going to digitally send you the form so you can collect it. If you don't want to have parents or students go through those multiple steps of converting it to a PDF, they can just take a picture. Great Kim can scan those as well. Just a couple tips that as we're looking at those, I just want to show you, you do want to make sure that, um, let me grab this one up right here. This is about the best one to grab. So I just have an example here of a form that I uh, captured or I scanned. So you want to make sure that you get the full scan area. And what I mean by the full scan area is the barcode or the bubbles that are at the bottom, as well as the name and the title that is at the top of that image. So you want to be able to include all of those items. Also, you don't want to have any real dark shadows. I actually have a, a shadow right here and it does pretty good on this scan. It's just if it was really, really dark, sometimes it is a little bit harder to see some of these drawings that are the handwriting or the student written responses in there. So you definitely want to kind of keep that in mind that if you are going to collect them, you might want to have not so many dark shadows. I actually use the tip is I'll put my form on the floor and I'll hover over it and kind of like use my back as the whole thing as a shadow. That's why it's just seeing it all as one color and not as multiple as the bright and darks because your phone will actually make those adjustments. Also with that is you don't want to have too much extra. So I purposely posed this one because if you were taking a quick picture, you have some extra things here that could cause an issue with scanning. It's just something to keep in mind. And we'll see if this one actually scans here in a little bit. It does pretty good most of the time, but every once in a while, you just may want to be aware that if you can get just on the outside edge, but don't lose your crop out your name or the barcodes, that way you can keep them all in. So that's how you collect them from your students. We passed them out. Now we're collecting them, collecting. Now we're going to scan those images. How I have found this is to be really kind of fascinating and thinking about how we've changed this approach is file scanning has actually been around in GradeCamp for quite a while. If you've ever used file scanning before, pop a line down in the comment section because I'd love to hear it. It was originally built with the intent that say a teacher had a stack of a hundred tests that they had done. They could take that down to their copier scanner in the teacher teacher's lounge, scan that off and email themselves a file. From there, you take the file, drag it into GradeCam, and it grades those in an instant. It's super speedy. It just saves you from having to hold up 100 pages at a t 100 pages. So it goes even faster than grading by hand with the camera. So it's always been there, but we've gone in and they add some additional um, items and checks just to make sure you get all the correct information that you want and just developing it to make it even easier to use. It does collect a variety of file types, including JPEG, PNG, and PDFs. PDFs do about the best just because they're a more flat image and they're pretty much guaranteed to be in the vertical the way they're supposed to. So that's a pretty good standard, but those JPEGs and those PNGs come over as well. We are going to drag to scan. 
or you can click the upload icon. I'll show you where those are at. And then we just check for our error messages because every once in a while, like I said, if something doesn't scan, what can we do to fix it or how can we still get that information in there? And then I'll share a user tip that came from somebody I talked to earlier this week. So I'm gonna come over here to GradeCam. So here in GradeCam, if I am going to uh, drag to scan, what you'll do is you'll go into like your Google Classroom or you'll go into Drive or email and download those and you can put them all into a folder. You can place them there on your desktop. You can leave them in the downloads folder wherever you would like. You can just easily select everything. And so I'm just clicking and dragging to get multiple documents and I can drag them over like that. Or I can come up here and this is the file upload icon and that opens another window that I can drag them over, or you can navigate to specifically where you've saved your files. So I save these here on my desktop. So I can click on the first one, hold shift and click on the last one. And I can hit different ones here. So I do this and I hit open and I can drag those right over. So you'll see as these scan, as you start to see them load and I can bring in others if I need to while I'm scanning. So ah, I'm still getting my internet error. My poor draggy ear internet. So it will come over and it'll scan these as we go. What I really like is it does break that down. Oh, I have a problem, so I need to check that one. And it tells me, it says no form could be read. So that's 5732. I'm just gonna jump over here and pull that one out because that one's right there. It's gonna go through the next one. It usually goes much faster, but like I said, with me being on my live, I may be dragging down my internet. And you can see I've titled these certain ways so you'll notice how they come across because I wanted you to note some troubleshooting that you could do. So one is that extra space. We're gonna pull that one out. And then the next one we're gonna go into, what I actually wanted to show you this one is the specific. So I said this page is in a different assignment and will not be visible in this list. So it's gonna start scanning some of these other ones. If I open this one up, this form does not match the test I'm on. The test I'm on is actually a fractions test, but this is for an English capture. And so they don't match. But since I told you to stay specific on the assignment that you're using, so my title shows up, it knows where to send it. If this wasn't specific, it wouldn't go. So that's why it is kind of another advantage to make sure these are specific assignments. If it's a compatible, you may have three or four of the same kinds of tests and they may not show up, okay? So if you have specific examples, it goes there right away. Now I had my last one, it says test reflection sheet. It does not have a form. So actually what's really nice about that is if you accidentally grab other things, like this is one I grabbed on accident, oh, yep, that's not a form and I can put it away. If you have a document that's multiple pages, you'll see that each one is a quick like green check, yep, you're good to go. So you get really good feedback on what's available and what worked and did not. So I have two up here that I wanna double check. So I will say that I had the same form and I tried it on a PC and I didn't have any problems dragging it over. Like I emailed it to myself, I downloaded it on a regular PC computer and right now I'm working from a Mac. In my Mac, for some reason, it's still seeing this image like it's in a landscape view. So like it's rotated and that doesn't wanna scan. So if I just open it up in preview and come up here to file and save and then close it and drag it back over, it'll scan just fine. So there's that 5732, didn't scan before, but I'm testing it again. And I can bring that in. So you may find that you just made it open it and save it, and that locks the orientation in place so you don't have to, it may be seeing it as sideways where it originally is not. So there it went, just fine. So here's the extra space one. This is another one that I can open up. You can go into your test and maybe um, open it in any sort of photo or uh, imaging software that you have. Like I said, it has a little bit of a shadow so I could try to convert it or I may just try to crop it down initially and see if that works. Let me crop and save and close and then bring that one in as well. So it really gives you great feedback to see what worked and what did not in that file scanning, but it's all there collected digitally. What's really nice is those results are gonna still come in so I can look at my rubric capture. So if I click on Lucy Lou, so I wanna see her results. 
there's those images right there. So later on down the road, when you want to talk to your students about what they learned or what they write and understanding, did they get the right processes here? I still have an image of their work that I can reference back to and go over again. So these will grade, it will grade these handwritten responses. All of that is really powerful just for the fact of I allowed my student the opportunity to write out their thinking or draw out what they were doing just by pulling it still over into grade cam. So you're servicing both your paper needs and your digital students there. So one tip that came from a user I talked to earlier this week, and he says what he does is if he has his students take a picture and they just either text him or email him to him, is he just opens that up on his computer screen and uses his phone with the mobile app and just scans it directly off of the computer. Computer screens and phone cameras are getting better and better, so that's just another easy tip that if you wanna do that, you can. So here's an example of that form. I just opened it up full screen. You just want to make sure that you're actually seeing the whole form. You don't want to zoom in so much that part of it's cut off or it won't fully scan. So you want to be out enough that it can see the whole form. Hold your phone up and you can scan it right there on your computer screen. No printing needed. So that was just a great tip from another teacher that we had talked to earlier this week. So again, this is the file scan and it's really kind of a nice to really